Well, good morning, Maku International Fellowship, and welcome to what I believe to, is going to be a very special worship gathering, gathering around the Lord's table, a place of, of remembrance, a place where we once again recreate in our hearts and our minds uh, the grace and the love and the goodness of God. Uh, glad that you're here together with us today. Maku International Fellowship is an English-speaking, multinational, multi-denominational family of Christian faith where we are joyfully committed to growing in our love for God and for one another. Here at BIF, it's always about the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, that's the reason why communion is such an cr incredible part of our experience together. Hey, I have invited my home group uh, to help me today as we celebrate communion. And I hope that uh, you have some people uh, gathered around you uh, so that you can participate in what is a, a community event Jesus called us together to celebrate this time, to, to remember what he has done for us. And, uh, and we're going to do that today in a, a very special service. Uh, I've invited uh, my son-in-law, Joseph, and my daughter, Lindsay. They are going to lead us in our musical worship that will prepare our hearts uh, to receive the cup and the bread. And uh, let's begin by uh, looking to the Lord and asking him uh, to bless us together today. Our Father, we come to you today and we thank you so much for this that you have told us to do. Do this as often as you do it in remembrance of me. And so today we, we dedicate a little more than usual this time, this gathering to uh, focus again upon the, the great grace and love that you have lavished upon us. And so, Lord, I would pray that you'd guide and direct us. May your Holy Spirit give us insight. Help us, Lord, to explore the depths of the great love that you have for us. Bless us as we worship you in song, as we, as we look at the scriptures. And then, Lord, when we uh, come together around your table, may it be a special time when you'll minister to each one of our hearts. We pray this all in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Don't you like hearing that? Joseph and Lindsay. Uh, let's lead us in song. Well, good morning to you, brothers and sisters in Baku. I'm Joseph, and this is my lovely bride, Lindsay, who is daughter of Tim and Danita. Uh, we're grateful to be with you this morning, uh, grateful for uh, the work of the Spirit, who is able to join us across thousands of miles, um, who is able to unite our hearts, who is able to unite our voices um, in love and in praise of Jesus. Um, we're grateful for this time, and as we enter into worship, I want to invite you to lift your voices with ours for this morning's call to worship. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And would you join us as we sing to our God? Yeah. 
shout. Let our shouts be your anthem and your renown. Fill the sky, we are here for you. We are here for you. continue journeying through uh, this time of worship together, uh, we want to take some time uh, for preparation. Uh, at the close of this service, as Danita mentioned, uh, we'll have the privilege of taking communion together. Um, and this communion is a unique uh, part of Christian worship where, um, in some mysterious way, the Spirit uh, makes Christ present to us uh, in the bread and in the wine. Um, where we drink of the cup of salvation, where we take into ourselves um, the body that was broken for us. Um, and this is a serious matter, and uh, we want to take a little time um, for reflection, for confession, um, and to open ourselves up to the work of the Spirit through communion. Uh, so we'll invite you to continue singing with us, and if it seems right, uh, to simply listen to the words and reflect on them. Um, and we ask that this would be a time where our hearts are prepared um, to feel the weight of salvation and, the, and to glory in it. So let's continue singing together.
We will feast in the house of Zion. Do you folks think about uh, that day, uh, anticipate, look forward to that day of, a, of an eternal wedding feast with millions upon millions of people who are Christ's followers, gathered together forever and ever. You know, that, that's one of the themes that really ought to carry us in communion. That the, the people that we sit with and we celebrate the Lord's table with, uh, they are, you are, people that we will gather with forever and ever and ever. That's the reason why communion is such a very special, a powerful moment for, for the church. Because it's not only looking back at what Jesus has done, but it's, it's considering what Jesus has done... <laughs> And seeing what, because of what he has done, what the future will be for us. It's also a point to, to look at the right here, the, the here and now, right now. It's an opportunity for us to examine our hearts and our lives. The Apostle Paul asks us to do that. And in the context of talking about the, the Lord's Supper, the Apostle Paul writes this, A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us will, will take and we will we'll examine our hearts, we'll see if there's any sin, anything that is wrong, uh, and, and that's a good habit to get into. It's one of the reasons why we want to do communion regularly. But I, I want you to look at the next verse that the Apostle Paul writes. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Now, I'm sure that for most of us, we... We think immediately of the body of Jesus Christ. The body of Christ as it hung on the tree. 
as it hung on the tree and it paid the debt for you and me. That's kind of the thing that we think of when we read that verse. But I, looking at the bigger context of what Paul is writing about in chapters 10, 11, and 12, you see that the body of Christ is more than just the, the physical body of Christ which hung on a tree, which was buried in the ground, which was raised from the dead, and, and which right now sits at the right hand of the Father in majesty. You know, I really think that the body of Christ is something that we need to consider as being the, the church, the body, the, the physical representation of Jesus Christ here on earth is the church. And see, Paul is writing in chapters 10, 11, and 12, he is really trying to get them to see that, you know, this is, this is serious business. This thing of the community of faith, the society of Christ followers, is a very, very important part of your Christian faith. In fact, if you turn back to chapter 10, you read this. Chapter 10, verse 16. Is not the cup of thanksgiving for which we give thanks a participation in the blood of Christ. That's the forgiveness of Jesus, the, the washing of Christ's blood. And then he says, and is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Okay, there we're talking about the, the broken body of Christ. And, but then he switches metaphors a little bit. He said, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. All of a sudden, there's this, this shift, this double meaning almost to the, the term, the body of Christ. In fact, later on in chapter 12, it talks, quite frankly, one body, many parts. So when we come together for communion, and Paul asks us to examine ourselves, I really think that he's asking us to examine our relationships with one another. In that chapter 11 passage, what was happening was he was saying, I, I can't write to you. I can't commend you for, for how you're conducting yourselves. Because when you come together to have the Lord's Supper together, some of you go ahead and eat and don't wait for the others to come. And by the time those other folks come, well, all the food is eaten. It's all gone. And you ought to wait for one another. You ought to be kind. You ought to be considerate. You ought to be loving for one, of one another. This has been the Lenten season, and uh, as I thought about that, I, I didn't do a, a specific Lenten uh, series of sermons. But, you know, as, as I went along, I, I thought, you know, this series of messages on the Sermon on the Mount, those, those six contrasts that Jesus drew from, from the way the Israelites and the Jewish leadership were thinking about what pleased God, and then Jesus saying, but I say to you, there were all ways that we could examine our hearts and our lives. I came away looking back on those six weeks as saying that that's a that's a really good Lenten service because Lenten series because now it's a great way to look at our relationships. We said in that series that the Sermon on the Mount, especially chapter five, is all about the relationships, the relationships within the body of Christ. It's one of the reasons why it's so important for us to have some kind of physical connectedness with one another. We're, we're, fa we're, we're fascinated with the idea of being able to get together, all 300 or so of us at the Hyatt uh, Conference Center. But, you know, um, the church, church is not an event. I don't go to church. You are the church. I am the church. Church is not, a, uh, it's not a, a place we go to. It's not an event. The church is the body of Christ. And so it's important that we have some place where we connect deeply with one another. It's one of the reasons why I invited our, our home group to come and be a part of this communion service, because I wanted to, to illustrate to you, I wanted to, to show that the significant impact that it has when we partake of the Lord's Supper together. 
today you might be there participating in this uh, communion worship gathering and you're by yourself. Um, I would pray that there would be at least a heart connection with us and you. Others of you are gathered in a home group or your, your two families are gathered together. Whatever it takes, it doesn't take, it doesn't take 300 to make the body of Christ. It's where two or three are gathered. There I am in the midst. And I, I think we need to think that way at BIF. I think we need to think more about what it means to be a community of Christ followers. People who are genuinely, deeply committed to one another in growing in our relationship with one another. The communion table is a place where we bond with Jesus Christ. It is a bonding, spiritual bonding moment with Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you, my friends, it is a bonding moment for us. It's a time when we celebrate together our Savior, our Lord. Even when we say the Lord's Prayer together, we recite the Lord's Prayer together, we, we are saying our Father. It is a community event. It is something that we do together. May God bless you as you ponder your relationships with people in the body of Christ. We're going to sing a, a, a preparation hymn, and it's a it's a it's entitled the communion hymn. It's looking at the cross, understanding the cross, the the extent of the cross for us. And I I would ask that you would really search your heart and your mind during that time. Think about relationships that you need to confess and make right uh, before God, and then possibly afterwards go and make it right with those people. And we'll have a time of reflection, meditation and assurance of God's blessing and his care. And uh, then, we'll part then we will prepare to partake of, uh, of the Lord's Supper. Uh, let's join together in singing.
trains and scups of all made in to now invite you to come to the Lord's table, a place of his provision, a place of his grace, a place of his unfathomable and powerful love. Let's begin with a time of confession, a corporate confession of our sins. I'll uh, read the leader's section, and if you would recite uh, that which is designated for the people. It seems impossible that anyone would give what you did to save men and women like us. But you gave yourself freely for our sakes. It seems unimaginable that anyone could love the way you did, including outcasts, rebels, and even your persecutors, and refusing to strike back. But you loved so much that you laid down your life for our sakes. We acknowledge that we are not all that we would like to be. We carry wounds and regrets some of which are our own design, and some of which we have received from others. We acknowledge our failings, our bitterness, and our hatreds, and ask you to heal us. Of all of our sins, forgive us, O God. In all our weaknesses, strengthen us, O God. From all of our diseases, heal us, O oh God. Now would you take a few moments to uh, pray and meditate, examine your heart, bring it before the Lord.
Now I invite you to recite with me the Apostles' Creed as an affirmation of our belief in the saving power of Jesus Christ. Reciting after me, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, that is really the, the hallmark of what 
of what we gather around to do today, to think about, ponder the, the incredible sacrifice uh, that our God made for us. I'd like to read to you the passage of Scripture from Matthew that records the Last Supper that Jesus had with his disciples. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Our Father, today we come before you and we thank you for giving your Son, Jesus Christ, your one and only Son sent into this world to be our Savior. And Lord Jesus, we thank you for your obedience to the Father and for going to the cross and dying for us. Lord, we don't begin to, we, we cannot begin to imagine the agony that you faced, the pain and the suffering that you endured all because of your great love for us. But today, as we partake of the, the bread and the cup, as we allow those physical elements to go into our mouth, we, we pray, Lord, that there would be a spiritual sense that would go deep into our soul of understanding the great love you have for us. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise and glory. Our Father, we bow our hearts before you. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ was broken for you. 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 Body of Christ. Lord Jesus, to you be the glory and the praise and the honor. We thank you for your sacrifice for us. We ask you to bless this to our soul's nourishment. In your name we pray. Then Jesus took the cup and he gave it to his disciples and he said to take and drink all of it. For this was the blood of the new covenant. He said to drink it as often as we did in remembrance of him.
Father, your word tells us that, that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So, Lord, as people who are trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ and his forgiveness, we, we accept this gift. And we thank you for the forgiveness that there is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash us and cleanse us. Make us whole and new. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this precious blood. Amen. Partake together. Hmm. Let's worship in song again and uh, lift up the greatness of our God and his love for us. Joseph's turn. 
Okay. Hey, y'all take, take care. Yep. Have a great week. Yeah, God bless. Bye-bye. Ah, yes. So our little sign says, please come in. Because you know what? Not all of our home group gets here right on time. And so we just tell them, come on in and join us uh, when you get here and uh, be a part of us. I hope today has encouraged you about the, the body of Christ, the community of faith that you have, have come to a, a greater appreciation of just how critical it is to have these deepening relationships. It's, it's just something, there's something that, that being in a room with 300 people, yeah, that's great. To worship God that way, there's, there is something, there's a dynamic to that. But, but there's also a dynamic to coming into a, a small group of people who know you and you know them. That when you talk about God's word, there, there's something very relevant about it with one another. You can share one another's burdens. You can pray for one another. You can lean upon one another. That's what the body of Christ was designed to do and to be. And, and I think God is challenging BIF to go deeper into those kind of relationships. And so I hope that today has stirred something in you and no matter what level of relationships, no matter what level of bonding you are in, at in, in the relationships here, I, I hope that God has put something in your heart and desire for a deeper, more meaningful kind of relationship with the body of Christ, with a, a small group. Maybe it's not a, a big home group. Maybe it's just two families getting together. But somehow or other, you connect, you bond. I trust that today there, there's been a bonding, a bonding to, to Christ. That's what communion, that's one of the main purposes of communion. But the other main purpose is a bonding with one another. And I hope that has happened to your heart and your life today. And, uh, and as you go through this next week, you will sense the presence of Christ. Not, not just the Holy Spirit within you, oh, but the, but the body of Christ, the, the, the community of faith, supporting loving and caring so that you can you can text you can whatsapp you can call you can just drop by and say i need you to pray for me that's what god had intended when he put the body of christ together may god bless you with a, a vision of what that could be in your heart and your life what what it could look like what what that kind of a meaningful relationship with the body of christ would look like in your in your life Hey, next week, uh, we are going, we're planning a, a Zoom gathering. And uh, so watch your emails for a, uh, an email to give you a link to that Zoom gathering. And uh, we will uh, we'll gather together and we'll be able to see one another and talk to one another a little bit. And that's kind of a little confusing on Zoom, I know, but, but it's just wonderful to see one another that way. And, um, and we hopefully we'll be able to share some uh, exciting plans for Easter Sunday with you on that Zoom gathering. Now, may the wonderful grace of Jesus Christ, the unfathomable, un uncalculable love of God, and all the precious presence of the Holy Spirit rest upon and abide with each one of you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great week, and uh, we'll see you next Sunday.